All right, hello and welcome. This is the Kubernetes uh, community, or SIG storage community meeting uh, about per volume CSI capabilities. Um, this is the fourth one of these, I think, and we're sort of, we sort of reached a, a point last week where we had basic agreement among the people on the call of the, the, the direction we should go forward. But um, the, main, the main detractor for that position in the original call was Michelle, and we had hoped that she would join today to sort of see if we can get her to buy in on this. And it, since she's not here, we can't do that. And we need to figure out if we need to, to, to find another time slot that she can join or if, or if this conflict that she has will be over by next week and we could deal with it then. Um, in the meantime, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, Hamon, you weren't here last week. You said anyone else that, uh, or anyone else that has any questions or, or comments about where, where things stood last week? Yeah, I haven't had chance to visit. I just returned from yeah. vacation yesterday. Sure. So well, I, I, I can do a lightning round review of, of the proposal. Um, that, that's, no, yeah. that's no problem. Okay. Um, but uh, any, anyone else that had questions or concerns or ideas, a, a new idea would be outstanding, given that all of the ideas we have have some drawbacks. <clears throat> But um, if not, I'll just cover where, you know, at least where, where my proposal was. So, so the idea was was to uh, formally uh, enshrine the concept of volume subtypes. So, you know, to today you have a persistent volume in Kubernetes. If it's a CSI volume, it has this driver field, and that's the only distinguishing factor from one volume to the next that is not opaque to Kubernetes, right? Everything else, you know, the volume attributes. Uh, are, are all opaque to Kubernetes. Um, and so it basically treats every volume from a particular CSI driver the same. The idea is we could modify the CSI spec to return a subtype, which would be uh, another string on a per volume at creation time and actually store it in the PV. Whether we call it subtype or something else, I don't really care. I mean, we, we could quibble about the name, but the idea would be that the driver could then say, okay, you know, this volume is an iSCSI volume. This volume is an NFS volume. And again, Kubernetes wouldn't necessarily know what the difference was. It would just be storing that string as the subtype for the volume. But then the, the theory would be when Kubelet needed to do the various things that it does, like look at the FS group policy or uh, determine what the maximum number of uh, volumes per node is or decide what to do with uh, SE Linux labeling, it could use that subtype to look up in a table of policies what to do or to ask the CSI driver what to do. Um, and uh, it would basically give you the, the, the effect of having multiple CSI drivers in one, right? So it would still just be one CSI driver, but you could have multiple subtypes and each subtype could get different treatment from the kubelet side. Of course, backwards compatibility would just be that this field would be empty and you would get the existing behavior if it was empty. And drivers that didn't care about subtypes could just always leave it empty and always get the existing behavior. So backwards compatibility is very easy. Um, but for new drivers that actually wanted to have different behaviors for different subtypes of volumes, this gives them the way to formally express that. <laughs> um, and uh, the only other, okay, so, so that was the, the Kubernetes side change. On the CSI spec, the specific change would be that when you do a create volume response and it creates, it contains this volume message, there would be a new field called subtype. And again, the name doesn't matter. And you would just return this every time you created a volume and you could leave it empty. But if you didn't leave it empty, it would get stored and then it would get used later on. And the other specific change for uh, volume limits per node would be that in the node get info response, in addition to having this one in 64 max volumes per node, you could have a map that would have a different limit for every volume type. And then we could <clears throat> make the appropriate changes on the Kubernetes side to communicate that whole map to the scheduler and have the scheduler look up the appropriate value uh, when making scheduling decisions, as opposed to just looking at this single value, which is what it does today. Uh, the main criticism that came up last week was well, this seems a lot like just having multiple CSI drivers. <laughs> um, you know, it, we're basically creating another field to, to do what we could do just by having multiple values in this field. But again, the, the big weakness of the multiple CSI driver approach is 
because of the way storage classes work and because of the way that the default storage class works, if you accept the default storage class or specify a specific storage class, you're always implicitly mapping your PVC to exactly one CSI driver. Kubernetes doesn't have a way to sort of say, okay, this, this PVC has an unknown CSI driver type and we're gonna let something decide that, right? T -t today, you know, T today you just have one CSI driver type. And then if there's multiple subtypes, it's up to the CSI driver to deal with that down inside crate volume. If we tried to have multiple CSI drivers to address these kinds of problems, it elevates that, that question back up to the Kubernetes layer of like, well, who decides whether you get iSCSI or NFS? Um, it couldn't be the CSI driver at that point because the, the moment you pick a storage class, you've chosen your CSI driver and it's too late <laughs> to, uh, to change it at that point. So the, the, that was our big uh, issue with doing multiple CSI drivers, aside from all the, the work that would be required to properly support multiple CSI drivers, like within one vendor. Um, and I think that the, this subtype proposal is relatively lightweight. It only requires one CSI spec change. It will require a, a, several changes on the Kubernetes side, but I, you know, I'm willing to write that cap. Uh, and, uh, it would also probably require like places where we are fetching capabilities, like not get volume capabilities or other, like something similar or not. Uh, there is no get volume capabilities. There's a validate capability. Validate. Yeah, yeah, validate, sorry. Yeah. So, so, so with, with validate capabilities, you, you pass in the volume ID, right? And, or, or, blank, or blank one, right? If you pass in the volume ID, you're referring to a specific volume. And of course the CSI driver knows what the subtype of that volume is already. Mm. So there's no need to tell it anything. And if you pass it in without, without a, a particular volume, then presumably you're asking a, a generalized question about what the driver can do, not a question about a specific subtype, right? Because it's the same thing. When you call create volume, you don't specify the subtype. It comes back from the driver because the driver picks the subtype. Yeah. I, so so th this is very specifically something that the driver communicates back to the CO. It, it would never be something where the CO would say, "Hey, I want I want a, you know a, a NetApp driver, or a NetApp CSI driver volume, and I want it to be iSCSI." Right? If you want it to be iSCSI, you would handle that by having some storage class parameter that would tell the NetApp driver, "Give me an iSCSI one." Right? It wouldn't be a, a specific you know select this subtype. <laughs> Okay. But, you yeah. Know, you, you would find out when it came back that it is in fact subtype iSCSI. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and I see. I see. So basically, like, yeah. So basically, like at the creation time, the subtype is returned, and that is gets stored in the PV. Yeah. And that determines the life cycle of that PV. Like, what is the subtype? Right. Right. It 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 just becomes a, a peer field to the driver, and then every time you want to know, like should I do an FS group policy change or should I do a SE Linux labeling thing or whatever kind of question you want to ask that would be CSI driver dependent. Now you have another field that you can use to look up like exactly which, which one. So, so specifically for like the FS group change policy today, there's just one field in the CSI driver spec, yeah. CSI driver CRD spec. We could in principle then add a map for FS group policy per subtype, right? And then you could just look it up in the map. Um, and of course, if the map was empty, you could fall back to the old behavior. I mean, the, we have to we have to specify the the backwards compatibility because there's going to be a lot of it. But I think it's pretty easy because we have a default in you know already for everything, and we would just continue to use those defaults if this if the more specific policies were not specified. <laughs> so we'll have to create a new field in CSI driver object and possibly deprecate the existing field that is that defines this policies, FS group change policy. Uh, well, so first of all, you, you can't really deprecate a yeah, V1 obviously. field. Yeah. It, would, it, would, it would live forever. And, and because it solves the backwards compatibility problem, I think you wouldn't want to deprecate. You want to say, okay, for, for ones that have a blank subtype, use the existing field. Um, because you're going to have CSI drivers that are too old to implement this feature. You're going to have CSI drivers that don't care to implement this feature. You, you, you want to be able to continue supporting the current behavior for CSI drivers that just don't, don't deal with subtypes. But then for ones that do, you would have this extra logic to maybe have a different 
policy per subtype or different uh, volume limit per subtype. <laughs> And on the same, on the similar note, like you will need something in CSI node object, like for the, to store the limit for the each subtype of the volume apart from the existing counts, the volume attachable counts. Yeah, well, I don't know what that looks like. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't go so far as to look up exactly what the API is on the Kubernetes side. Is it, is it annotations today, or is it a, a more formal part of the, the, the node spec? How is it yeah. done? It's in CSI, it's a field on CSI node object. CSI node, okay. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking the regular node object. Okay, um, I'll have to look at exactly what it looks like on the CSI node object and propose like what a new version could look like. Um, hopefully it's not that nasty. I mean, all of this would come out in the cap, but I don't want to write the cap until we have agreement in principle that this is a reasonable way forward. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> my main concern is like, it's a lot to get through API reviews and buying from studio, uh, like scheduler folks who are very, very particular about what they approve. Yes. Like so, sys, like CSI node object, and making it have this map of map is going to be like kind of tricky to to yeah. get them to yeah. approve it. So, so, so I, I agree that like this is still a lot of work. It's not not like a easy button kind of solution. But I've, I've managed to convince myself that like the only alternative to this is basically to not solve the problem and just live with the status quo forever. Um, I, I do not see a, a, like a lighter weight way to, to, to address this. Um, and so I, 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 that's why I'm still imploring people, you know, if you have a better idea, please propose it. Because yeah. this, is, this is not easy. This is going to be a heavy lift if we decide to go down this path. We'll get pushback from the API reviewers that the amount of code required will be big. Um, it, it'll 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 probably take a long time. Even in the best case, is two releases, right? Yeah. More realistically, it'll be three releases because of just the amount of changes and code reviews and and stuff to to get through to get it done. Um, yeah. Yeah. But 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 we have the advantage of you know the head start so. We we're past the feature freeze for 125, but we could start writing the cap, start getting the reviews, start getting the POC code done for 126. So that if 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 this is the path we go down, like by the time 126 feature freeze comes around, we could be ready to go with a lot of it to go to alpha. Uh, so so one concern, that, and I think that has to be kind of like clarified is like on the Kubernetes side, the, this this mapping, like for example, if this group policy for this subtype is this, this subtype is this, or the volume mm -hmm. rate for this subtype is this, this subtype is this. So there's like this, uh, like like there's a part of like, for example, like uh, Jan tried to propose SLNX detection as a first class, like, like support in CSI spec, but it was rejected for, for various reasons. So we have like, it as a hack well, and CSI driver. Well, I, I want to. Can we talk about that? Those reasons, because I was going to say the alternative to like making the CSI driver more complicated. I mean, I, I, I like, I like the ability to use the subtype and have a look a lookup table or the equivalent of a lookup table in the CSI driver object, just because it gets us out of having to deal with CSI spec changes, which are hard, and it yeah. lets us continue doing what we've been doing, which is just hack it, you know, on our side. But it there still is the open path to saying, okay, we could add specific CSI RPCs to do these things, then that might be cleaner than what we have been doing with the CSI driver CRD hack. Yeah, I think the, that's the, the main problem in CSI spec will be like, what will be this map look like? Like what are this, the source of this? Like we can say, okay, like that, that's where like in the CSI spec, it'll be like people will not, Agree to okay. We need a FS group subtype FS group policy mapping, SLNX FS uh, and subtype mapping. I don't know tomorrow, to tomorrow maybe app armor or something <laughs> subtype mapping or something specific to Windows. So the the thing is that I think those are the because it's essentially. Well, uh, are, are you are you talking about the CSI the CSI spec or the CSI driver CRD? So the source of this 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 uh, that uh, 
that map that will be that we are planning to put in CSI driver object for now. Right. Like, right. what will be the source? Like, is it like a so? Is the source CSI driver that returns the value from the? No, no. It, it, I mean, the, the way the CSI driver object is created today, it's just it's it's YAML that gets dumped onto the system when you install the CSI driver. Right. Right. That that's yeah. how we do it. And so, like, <laughs> in a world where you had a uh, a sort of a, a map per subtype net, the, the NetApp driver would just dump a CSI driver object that had a, you know, iSCSI do the FS group change NFS don't do the FS group change. And that would be our CSI driver object. Yeah. And then we would tell you which volumes are NFS ones and which ones are iSCSI ones. And the problem would go away. Yeah. As long as, how... as long as Kubelet was, was looking at that, you know? Yeah. I mean, it could work. And the, the, it should work like it's a bunch of work but like, like but i was saying that the pushing this uh, like in the csi spec will be harder like beyond the subtype is easy but making the csi driver return what properties it supports for each well, it, yeah that'll be difficult yeah but, but we don't the, the the key is we don't have to do that yeah right? like we the, don't have to do, yeah. the only thing you need is to get the subtype in there and we would have to figure out in the language of the CSI spec, how to communicate what it's what it means, and that would be yeah. tricky. But yeah. assuming that we can convince people that it, uh, a generic sort of tag that that the driver can make up that it communicates something to the to the CO has value, then then we're done, right? We don't you don't need any other CSI spec changes necessarily. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, now I, and and that that's still hard. I don't want to say that's going to be easy because <laughs> if I'm if I was if I was sitting on the other side of the table, reviewing that change in the CSI spec, I'd say, what the hell is this, right? I, how do you document what this field means? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, it, it but, just... but, but we can figure that out. Uh, and this would work just the same for statically provisioned PVs also, I would think, even though you're not having your colleague create volume RPC call, you're still just pulling those fields by hand, you can still set it up. So yeah, I would, you could. Yeah. So I would think that like uh, a driver that supports subtypes, but it had PVs created by old method can actually just set subtype in existing PVs. Like it, like some fields in PVs are once settable. One time you can set it, but once you set it, you can oh. modify it. Okay, well, yeah, that, that's another question of backwards compatibility. Is, yeah, should we should we make it possible to fix up old volumes that already exist? I hadn't thought of that, but maybe the answer is yes. Yeah, um, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, if the answer is no, the behavior is no worse than you have today, and and at least for the new volumes, you get the right answer. Um, so I, I do agree that you know, if we go down this path, we should think about maybe allowing people to fix up the old volumes, but that would be like a very out of band kind of a hacky fix that you'd have to each each vendor would have to do the you know on their own yeah no but but we do allow like uh, like for example you can set volume name uh yeah volume name in yeah. the pv once but once set you cannot change right something like right. that so so yeah we could make exception to this like in and theory this, a, yeah go ahead I, sorry I, I have a i have a question um so i was wondering uh, for what um, for what behaviors would we want Kubernetes to look up the the subtype and the map um, that the driver provides? I mean, I understand that FS group policy is one of them, but um, yeah. there might be other use cases we want to solve using this. And how would Kubernetes know um, which are the problems that it could um, solve <laughs> using the subtype? So, so, so there there is a new feature being added to the CSI driver, like in this release by. Um... Is it Jan who's doing it? Uh, the uh, the SE Linux labeling policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's this, it's a new Boolean that'll be on the CSI driver. So, so the idea, historically, you know, the way we've done this is that Kubelet wants to do some special things, uh, you know, on a per volume basis, and it doesn't, you know, but 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 not every volume supports the feature, and so. Mm -hmm. The, the, the two ways to figure out like should Kubelet do the thing or not would be one would be to make a proper CSI spec change so the CSI spec would tell you what you know whether Kubelet should do the thing or not but mm -hmm. but that that's not the path that we've historically followed historically we've just said okay we're just going to add a flag to the CSI driver CRD that basically lets the vendor say 
for all the volumes of my CSI driver type, turn the feature on or turn it off. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've done this for many, many features. The CSI right. driver just, just grows and grows and grows with more fields as we add. These are basically proprietary Kubernetes hacks so that we can allow CSI vendors to specify a behavior without mutating the CSI spec at all. Um, and we would just be continuing to do that here. And certain fields we would decide should be different on a per volume basis instead of on a per driver basis. We would have to have a more complicated field in the CSI driver object, or maybe an entirely new type of object. I mean, that, that's the other possibility is we say, okay, you need, you need a CSI subdriver object just so you don't have gross maps inside your objects. And then you have to look it up based on, you know, some other object, but, but we would figure out exactly what the Kubernetes API would need to look like or what would get past mm -hmm. API review. But, but the, okay. the, whole, the whole goal is to avoid changing the CSI specs so that we can make these changes entirely on the Kubernetes side. Okay. Yeah, so, so where I'm getting stuck is um, how, how would Kubernetes know which behaviors would be dependent on the subtype? You know, like it, FS group policy is one example, but there might be others. Um, right, but we, we would have to pick and choose each one, right? It would be a deliberate decision to say, we're going to make so this FS is just group a tool. policy. Okay, yeah, so this is, so this right, is right. just this a is tool? Just, exactly. This is just a tool. Okay. And then on a per feature basis, we would decide if we wanted to behave differently per volume or the same for all volumes. And if it was okay. going to be different per volume, we'd have to do more work to look up mm -hmm. the subtype. <laughs> okay, got it. Or, or we could go with the even, the even further step and for some features, actually put them in the CSI spec and actually have Kubelet query the, the driver and say, what should I do for this volume, right? Mm -hmm. for, for, for something where it really needs to vary on a per volume basis, the correct thing to do is put it in the CSI spec, but, but it's just that that's always more effort and this is easier. And so we've done it this way so many times. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk about steps forward or you know, the next steps so that we can actually reach a decision and decide what to do. And uh, we've lost Jing as well and a couple other people. So I'm going to, I guess, reach out directly to Michelle and ask uh, if she wants to pick a different meeting or if she's gonna be here next week. Um, I should figure out if I'm gonna be here next week now that I think about it, cause it's a holiday week. Uh, let me look at my calendar. All right, next Tuesday is the 5th of July, um, which may be a holiday in some places, at least in the United States. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's possible next week we'll have to cancel due to the holiday, but um, I, I will find out one way or another when we can get Michelle to join us and try to get a decision so that I can move forward. Um, uh, yeah, I have a, yeah, I, I may not be able to make on July fifth. I have, I have a dental. All right. Thing well, going on. My, yeah. So, am I, well, what is your feeling on this approach in general? Uh, it looks if we have to do like a subtype and solve this like in a very make it very generic way and very like like for long-term support and everything. It, it sounds reasonable and it sounds it sounds one way of doing it. But I also wanted to explore what I was talking about in the uh, in last call, which was like, uh, should we consider like how a driver author can, like like what we talked to, two, two things, make it easier to run multiple drivers together. And second is if a driver author wants to split the functionalities into different drivers. I know the PV name, the, the driver name in the PVs are hard coded. Should we support a way of doing that? So that if, a, oh, okay. like, for example, vSphere CSI driver has the, the read, read many file volume type and the block volume types is tomorrow, it's possible to run both the drivers in the same sidecars, but it's possible to, uh, you know, like split the functionality and right. split, change, change the names somehow. Okay, so 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 yeah, that, let me let's break that apart into all the different questions. So the answer of like, should we make it easy to run more drivers? Absolutely, yes. Like like, no matter what we decide here, it should be easier. Yeah, and, and we should do that. So similarly, 
like, yeah, if, if we can find a way to do sidecar sharing for multiple CSI driver types, like th that's that's a worthwhile improvement. If we can figure out how to make Kubelet spin up and spin down node plugins uh, so that you don't have to run the node plugin for every single driver type on every single node all the time, like that would be a huge benefit regardless of, of any of this, right? Like all of those things we should do. Yeah, now, now and that, I... <laughs> the, 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 the specific things that you're asking about, like, if somebody wanted to like change a CSI driver type because they were literally taking one CSI driver and breaking it into two, like that is a more interesting uh, discussion. I haven't really thought about what would be involved with that and uh, how nasty that might be. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that anything that changes the CSI driver is not going to work if you have attached volumes. Sure, like like we when we are going through this 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 we are going through this migration where we are migrating the whole entire entry PVs to the CSI counterpart. I know it's a huge endeavor, but but, 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 we but can, we've always managed to do yeah, that. We're in also a way that, like, always rely doesn't... on the trans, uh, translation library, right? It's not really we're not really changing the PV source. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, that, no. That, that's the key. <laughs> Everything we've done is has avoided mucking with the Kubernetes API. Sure, but I was saying that that requires generally a node drain and, re, uh, and node drain at least. And then you have this, your node comes with the new, new uh, the, the CSI driver becomes the default. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so for for moving from like in-tree to out-of-tree drivers for a specific PV type, like, yes, you have to bounce the volumes, but, but like, but, but that's a very specific case for moving from in-tree to CSI, right? For for a, a com for a company that has had a CSI driver for a while, you have customers with long running pods, and you want to be able to tell them that like you don't need to bounce all your pods to upgrade your driver to the next version, right? You just want to be able to upgrade your driver, and your pods keep running. Otherwise, you, you're, you're creating a big outage when when it's upgrade time, and people don't like that. <laughs> So yeah, no, I understand that. I'm just trying to see what is like, like I don't want to reject that idea out of hand that if we had a way of allowing people to, you know, like like the driver authors to, to split right. their driver this, like this way. And I know it will be one time pain where you have the customers who has to bounce their pods to different nodes, assuming that assuming the PVs can attach to other nodes fast enough, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like like a trade off. It's a trade off, right? Like what do we right. should oh, okay. we? Uh, yeah. So 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 again, like if that's a solvable problem, great. Like maybe we should do that for for this reason or for other reasons. But the the real showstopper was, uh, assuming you could do that, you still have the problem of which which type of volume do you get when you just specify a PVC with the default storage class, right? Like it's gonna. If you specify no storage class, it's going to get the default, and the default is going to have exactly one CSI driver. And so, if you've broken your CSI driver into two or three, only one of them will ever get used by the default storage class. And, and that was the real sticking point last week that nobody nobody could offer a way around the, um, the fact that. So, Haman, what is the problem that we cannot have like one default per driver? For storage class, I remember you mentioned something. There's some problem with what? that. No, this is what I'm saying. Is is it's, it's not. I mean, for, like for snapshot, we could do that. No, right. But for, oh, for yeah, no. storage class, there was some problem. It was you said something. I remember last time when we were talking about the. the well, the, answer you can only have path. one default storage class, right? All right. I'm just saying, like, why and, is that we cannot support one uh, default per driver? That is possible for but snapshot can, but, now. But how do you know what driver it's going to be before you know the storage class? So in uh, Kubernetes, we traditionally supported like this. Uh, if we ship with an admission plugin that sets your storage class if no storage class is specified in the PVC. And that behavior should work as it is. And that's the reason, that's one of the one of the main reasons we cannot have per driver default storage classes in, in Kubernetes. Yeah. Because, because then if it is P, is, is if it is storage class is not set in the PVC, which one will you pick? But, but but even if it is said, I mean, like like imagine today I have a NetApp storage class and I maybe have a bunch of other storage classes. But like as long as you specify the NetApp storage class, you're going to get a, a volume from our driver. But whether it's iSCSI or NFS is up to us, not up to you, right? It's just we'll make that decision based on all of the details that get passed in. 
You know, it could have yeah. to do with the access mode, it could have to do with the size, it could have to do with the volume mode. We, we'll figure it out. But like in a mode where we've split our driver into like the NetApp iSCSI and NetApp NFS, you still have to specify a storage class and you have to specify one of those driver types. And then you're always going to get that type. There's, you close the door to letting us decide what to give you. Uh, there are the drivers that are solving, like solving that via admission plugins, but but I, I understand. Like, but, like but, but, I, the, but the admission plugin would have to muck with the storage class. Yes. The only way, right? Yeah. And, and yeah, the and like, admission plugin <laughs> had to set the storage class. What, but, but what if the storage class is already set to like just the NetApp storage class? Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Like, the, the, would you have? Would you change it from like the NetApp storage class to the NetApp iSCSI storage class, or to the NetApp NFS storage class, and have, like, basically have every single, every single PVC go through like a, a scheduling step in an admission controller, and then come back around through the, the sidecar to actually get provisioned on the driver so, landed on. So I haven't thought very far into how it will work. Like, like, and I think like, uh, yeah, maybe. And I, I want to spend some time thinking about this, how it will work, like from like, like from covering every angle. And, and I, yeah. I, I know, I know, I know. It's just, it's, uh, but but the way I say it, it's like lesser of evil sort of. It's like we are stuck between rock and a hard place. And I don't know. So. Well, I, I mean, so so I, I find the admission controller idea interesting, but like it, it fundamentally, it, doesn't scale, right? Because if you only have one driver and it has an emission controller that does this work, it's great for that one driver. But the moment you have two different drivers, both trying to perform this scheduling function, they're going to step on each other's toes, right? And there's no way to, to disambiguate, like, was it supposed to go why to the NAB scheduler? Was it... Why is this scheduling problem? Why is this, what, where does, like... Well, like, I'm, I'm, like it, a lot of users don't care what type of volume they get, right? Like, like they have a PVC spec they downloaded from the internet. Maybe it's in yeah. their Helm chart, and maybe it's just in some app definition that they got in some YAML manifest. Like, they really don't care what type of storage they get. They just say, "Here's my PVC. It's a file system PVC. It's 100 gigs. Give it to me, right? And then figure it out. And it's up to the system to deliver you 100 gig volume somehow. And we have all of this existing machinery with the, you know, the, the default storage class and the dynamic provisioners that basically let the admin set things up in such a way that any given PVC will just get bound as long as it doesn't have ridiculous requirements in it. Um, and, 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 and it works even in a mode where you have multiple drivers because you can have lots of different storage classes and each one can point at a different driver and then you can specify what the default is for people that don't care and get reasonable behavior for everybody. But the, if, if what you're saying is like NetApp would have to include an admission controller to do scheduling between iSCSI and NFS to get even reasonably good behavior, then how does that admission controller coexist with another driver that also has an admission controller that's also trying to perform the same function, right? If, if, if the NetApp driver is doing some sort of scheduling magic and assigning a storage class, and there's also like a VMware driver that's also doing additional magic. No, the, or... the, the way I see it, like it would work is like, for example, like like the way it works right now. For example, like the right now, if you have, I don't know how NetApp driver is doing, but vSphere driver is doing like, okay, you, you are asking for a read write many volume types. You have just one vSphere storage class and you, the moment you ask for read write many, it's going to provision a file type volume. Yeah, yeah. Return it to you. Same deal with Azure uh, file driver. Similar thing. It's right, doing. Because, it's not... because they're not using an emission controller. They're just letting the request get to the CSI driver, and then it does yeah. the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. The so, same so... thing. Same functionality. Because all it's the driver is looking into is the parameters of the of the PVC. Same functionality can be brought into the into the admission pro, in a kind of a admission plugin where it looks into the PVC what it is, it's asking and it can set the it can set the right storage class into the PVC and let it go. Should work in theory. But I mean, this this forces you then to have multiple storage classes, right? Yeah. Like I would have to yeah. I would have to have a NetApp default storage class and a NetApp iSCSI storage class and a NetApp NFS storage class. And you would have to have all three to get reasonable behavior. And then to, 
And so it, at that point, like NetApp is managing your storage classes when you install our driver. Like we've always sort of prided ourselves in saying, you know, it's up to you to set the storage class, right? You can put mm -hmm. what you want in there. We're not going to tell you what to put. And if you want to have other drivers, you're also welcome to do that, right? We're not trying to over specify how your cluster should work. Um, I feel like this is creeping towards saying like, we're going to own storage provisioning in your cluster. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. and in a, and no one else can do anything, which isn't isn't such a nice stance to take. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I agree. I think I like we should. I want to think a little bit more. Like, if if there's a way to solve this, like this this problem. Okay. Problem. I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I I I feel like we, we sort of laid out the three broad avenues, and and one of them is you know multiple multiple CSI drivers. But I I think the real sticking point is this basic yeah. you know storage class provisioning problem and not to mention all the other technical issues that that we should be addressing anyways but but this is the one that's actually a functionality problem yeah the the, the other issues are solvable and it doesn't even require a, as such i i mean as such it shouldn't even require a feature gate or something in in kubernetes like assume well it, uh, but, but, but so. like it, yeah. if we go down the path of you know kubelet controlling which which node plugins are running? Like th that's a brand new feature. That's a lot of work that would need to be feature gated. Oh, mm, yeah, that one right? obviously, but like multiple, uh, uh, yeah, drivers running in the same sidecar. That's, that's that doesn't need a feature gate. No, access. no, but, but that one also doesn't benefit you very much, right? That just saves you a few megabytes of memory on one node. The mm -hmm. the, the the node plugins running on all of your nodes, and that their memory savings is much more important on the nodes than on the controller side. So like, it doesn't bother me if, if I had to have 15 sidecars instead of five, it's like, okay, whatever, right? That's that's a few hundred megs of memory, maybe a couple gigs of memory on one node. Like I can deal with that. If you tell me that I have to double the memory footprint on all of the nodes for my node plugin, because now I'm running two copies of my node plugin instead of one. It's like, wait a minute, that's a that's pretty major. Yeah, no, when I say... When I say same side, like you know, the same sidecar, I mean as, as as a part of the same process, not like just different containers in the same pod. It's not like I, I would think. Oh, you're, you're, you're thinking of a way that two different node plugins could run in the same process, you know, same same binary. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. If you have ideas on on, you know, there, let, let, let me know. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the idea of being able to not even run the plugin at all if there's no volumes in use on that node. Yeah, yeah, right. but that's much harder to solve because that's that's much harder to solve. So like it we is. This, it is. And, and we had this similar problem, like or kind of orthogonal a little bit, like the, the fuse driver problem that you cannot up, upgrade a fuse driver without killing all the mount points it holds. Oh, all right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's. I don't know what time, what day works for Michelle, but I want. I will. I, I, I really want to like spend some time thinking. Okay. Well, I, I will. Um. I guess if there's a if there's a change to this meeting, I'll. Uh, I don't know what I'll do. Uh, I, I can promise to post on this document when the new time is. Uh, and maybe we can. And if it's going to be a very strange time, maybe we could even just send out an email blast to the dev list because that's what we've done in the past to announce meeting changes. Just, just. Blast the dev list. Yeah, we can uh, we can send a doodle poll uh, or something if, if if we have to for the next next. Well, meeting. yeah, yeah, yeah. To 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 pick the time and get the, the critical people involved, we may need to do that. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll make sure to include you, Hamant, and anyone yeah. else who reaches out to me. This is they definitely want to be included. And uh, I guess that's all we can talk about today, because because again, we we gotta we have to get the right stakeholders in here to to help decide. And then, and then I'll have to start writing a cap, assuming we can get agreement. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else before we wrap up today? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Ben.